or something that'll never hold up. It's even simpler than that. Go ahead and break ground in. Explain all the papers got mixed up. It's too late to pull out now. The ground is already broken. You hear a little whining and crying from the community board. Maybe paying a little simplify. We all set. And that can work. If you play by the system. But you're playing against it. Listen. A few phone calls to the right people from above. Trust me. Will be set. When is the community board ever won a case against this? It's all from the inside. Well, I shouldn't be explaining this to you. It should be something you're born into. So, how's Samantha? She's great. We're both adjusting to our new life together, and she's fine. I'm all worried about you at the beginning. Us? Why? Well, for starters, the age difference. And you guys kind of moved fast. You had that shotgun wedding. It's not how I intended to start a family, but I'm not getting any younger. And I really do like this girl. Let me ask you something, Jim. Oh, wait, hold on. Samantha! Okay. Alright, I'll be right there. Yeah. Sorry. What's up? about the two of us get away together? Just get out for a bit. Well, what about your job? You're out for a big promotion. Plus, you could use the money. Well, don't worry about that. I mean, I'll talk to Martin first thing on Monday morning, and we'll work something out. And the important thing is that we get you some rest, some relaxation. You need it. Hell, I need it. So don't you want to know? Molly, we would have had a little girl. I'm sorry, John. It's not your fault. You know, we have to deal with the present moment now.
Why not? I'm sorry. I mean, I know there's plenty of work to be had. It's just that I... Actually, John, but this may come as a blessing in disguise. You remember that casino deal we've been trying to get on? Yeah. Well, it actually got passed about a week ago. We need someone out there to monitor the development. And you were the first to come to mind. You mean... I could keep my job? You kidding? You're gonna be making double out there. We want you to be the executive director. It's not gonna be easy, though. You know, sometimes these things can get out of hand. A lot of wasted bleeding funds. So we trust you to cork the holes that you see fit. The community board and town hall meetings from before nearly had our reps in tears. They're vicious. They pull out all their ammunition. Dying elderly, sick children, you name it. So you may come across some unpleasantness, but hell, I think this thing is going to be a good thing for this man. When can we leave? Sooner the better. Our corporate office bought a house out there. There's one thing though, John. We want to get you the help you need. Martin, it's not necessary. I'm fine. Non-negotiable, John. Martin, they're daydreams. I mean, you were there. You know what I'm talking about. John, you want to keep your job? It's like the deeper we go, the further back in time. I haven't heard some of these songs since high school. You know, when they told me in Maryland I was expecting crab cakes and John Waters, not uh, the shooting location of Deliverance. <laughs> I think it's going to be a nice change of pace. I already feel more at peace just seeing the trees. You know, my idea of nature was becoming Tonkin Square Park. Yeah, maybe I can get a job at the local general store. <laughs> I can't believe they actually have a general store. You know, I heard something in the back. There was a little room in the bathroom, and I could hear people talking, but it, it almost looked like they had an altar or something. It was kind of satanic-like. Well, I wouldn't put it past them. A lot of weird stuff happens out here in the middle of nowhere. cell reception at all. You know, we literally couldn't be any further down the road. It's gonna take some adjusting to. Now, Martin wouldn't put us into anything he wouldn't feel comfortable in staying in himself. I guess so. Well, here we go. Welcome. You must be John and Samantha. We've been waiting for you. You have? I'm Roy. But around here, they call me Yeti. They say it's because of the way I walk, but it could be because of the way I smell. Well, which is it then? You're gonna love it here. We're all so excited to have you. Well, that's not the um, reception I was expecting. Oh, some people hold grudges. They're just unwilling to forgive, but I understand. 
A man's got his business, and a man's got to do what a man's got to do. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, if you need anything, just yell. I mean, I live just down there in that greenhouse, and maybe we can be good friends. Right. Bye. Thank you. Bye. You think he has a book club we can join? Well, looks like they forgot to pay the electric bill this month. At least it's more space than we're used to. It's pretty creepy. What the hell is all this stuff? Whose rental property is this? Mm. I'm gonna go get my bag from the car. Oh, no, everything's gonna be fine. Mm, I feel like the entire town is just gonna hate us. No, it, it's like the first day of school. Everything is gonna work out. What was that? This explains our mysterious first house noise. We need to make sure this door is always closed and locked. We don't want any wanderers coming in. Don't say that. I'm gonna be too scared to do laundry down here anyways. Well, that there's like a storage room back there. We could make that into a spare bedroom. Twice a week for the last 30 years. You know you're not welcome. No. I'm sure. Hey! Good, how are you? Look like you haven't bathed in two years. You smell like a goat on the back of a fuck. You look. You're still living under the bridge, aren't you?
Can I buy you a drink? No. But I'd like to buy you one. You know who I am? No idea. But I'm guessing you know who I am. Sure I do. I'll just have to start charging admission for all our guests. Do you think that man meant what he said? Who? I mean, that guy at the bar? Uh-huh. Hell, drunks just like to cause confrontation. Don't worry about it. No one is above the law. Wherever we go, the law is the law. God, you have so much unpacking to do. Don't touch anything. Let me take care of that. I'll start unloading things uh, after my appointment. You need rest. Okay, thank you. No, it's fine. Mom, um, thank you for everything for doing this with me. No, oh, it's gonna be so good for both of us. When we get back to the city, we'll be like new people. Saperstein. <laughs> Spooky movie reference. I'm Dr. Mitchell. Uh, 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 yeah. I'm sure it'll be a great pleasure to know you. We will make some serious headway, I am sure of it. There's nothing to be afraid of, believe me. I am sure you will be a new man. Well, thank you. I still have my suspicions. You can trust me. John, this may be too much for us to handle right now. I, I can't go through any more stress. I just can't. Well, fine. I will go down to the police station right now and I will file a what police report. What will that do, John, really? Well, I mean, they'll, they'll keep a closer eye on the house after that. Once they understand the, the difficulties between my company and the townsfolk, they will surely keep an eye on the house. I have read through my most personal stuff, my journals, everything. Uh, I will get it back. I promise. I've written about my miscarriage, about Molly, about your PTSD, fucking everything. Whoever has that knows more about us than anyone else. It makes me nauseous just to think about someone else reading our most personal moments. I will, I will figure this out. I will get it back, somehow, I don't know how, and 
But once we get this place cleaned up, it is going to feel a lot more like home. Everyone here seems to hate us, even before they met us. It's not like we have the money to isolate ourselves. How, how can we even stay here and be happy? It's just a bunch of bars and churches. I couldn't even get a job here if I needed to. going to be making our new best friends at the local watering hole. The way to do business with these rooms is through the church. The church? Have things gotten so bad that we have to go to church now? Plus, no one goes to church anymore. Not in the city, no, but around here, I'm sure they do. What else are they going to do on a Sunday? Football! When they see us standing tall in the pews at uh, Our Lady of Perpetual whatever, Hangover. they will accept us as brothers in Christ and stop trying to burn crosses in our yard. Fine, but I'm not handling any snakes or drinking any strychnine. Fake it till you make it. Starbucks on every corner, and the people generally not giving a fuck about anyone else. <sighs> it's the selfishness that makes that city so special. I really wish that carried over into more cities. Yep. Let's hear it for City Life. It's pretty fantastic. <laughs> It's the blood of Christ, honey. It's not Merlot. That kind of a copper taste. Yeah, I know. I hate doing that. You never know if the guy before you was sick or if they washed the cup beforehand. Church is so unsanitary. <laughs> You're so neurotic. <laughs> well, there's always going to be a roadblock with each step that we take. But, uh, you know, counting lives are so I may be looking at where 
construction crew members, but uh, other than that, we're good. Oh, well, you know, I'll lose it by the first, but uh, I think we're, we're finally adjusted. Did you know it took a week to get electricity? It's a little more intense than you led us to believe. Who, me? No. What are you talking about? What are you getting at? Everything right now. I don't know that John even wants this child. My child! Those fucking bastards! Hey! Secret. You're pretty much the most hated man in this here community right about now. Really comes as no shock. So you were expecting something like this? It was inevitable. And you did nothing to prevent it? Not warn us? Not patrol our home? Mr. Harris, until something did happen, it would be impossible to predict when and how. So, so what are you going to do about it now? I mean, do you know who might be involved in this? Mr. Harris, this is a town built solely on strong faith and good people. And when those people feel endangered, well, they become territorial. My wife is traumatized. My home has been invaded. Our most personal property has been stolen and destroyed. And you're telling me that this is normal. It's just the way things are. Officer, let me ask you something. For a town that is built on values and faith like you say, what's with all the demonic imagery? I'll be sure to send a patrol car around once in a while, check on your property, make sure things don't escalate. But until then, I'll simply tell you, lock your doors, take care of your wife, and get ready, because things are about to get a lot worse. Oh, Mr. Harris. Yes. I'm real sorry to hear about your child. 
It's a real tragedy. How did you know about that? News travels fast in a small town. Don't worry, I didn't read them. Maybe you should uh, put those someplace safe. What are we gonna do? I mean, seriously, what are we gonna do? I could buy a gun. I'm sure they sell them over the counter out here. You could never shoot anybody. Don't be ridiculous. Well, we just have to move past this then. Break-ins happen all the time. This was different. I saw the eyes through the window. Dark, piercing eyes. Who knows how long they were looking at us. They could still be looking at us. They must have been in our basement for hours. Well, what do you want me to do? If I can't buy a gun, and the cops are no help, then what do you suggest? We could leave, or I could. I could go stay at my mother's. Samantha, we can't just give in like that. This isn't a test, John. This is our life. We don't even have any cell service out here. If the lines got cut, we couldn't call for help. How do you think Officer Suzanne knew about Molly? It's, don't you see? It's the whole town. You're saying the whole town is in a conspiracy yes, to chase us out. exactly. Well, what would be the point? We've already broken ground. We have all the money. They have no power. If they chase us out, they haven't stopped a thing. I'm so scared, John. The general store, the altar I thought I saw. Yeah. Well, tonight, the figures, the pentagram, it, it's all connected. It's all connected by evil. I'm gonna call Martin tomorrow. I'm gonna let him know what's happening. Maybe he can place us in a different location. Other than that, I don't know what to do. I'm sorry. I feel so helpless. That's not a good feeling for a man. Mr. Taylor, I appreciate your situation. I really do, and I take no pleasure in this, believe me. But the U.S. Constitution says I can do what I'm doing. Your property is being seized for the common good. I'm 85 years old. I've been here all my life. I even raised my kids here. They love this place. And when I'm dead and gone, it's going to be theirs, all theirs. Mr. Taylor, I have here a check written out to you for $30,000. This is the market value of your home. I have a constitutional right to do what I'm doing. It's called eminent domain. It means that your property can be seized for private development. It's for the common good. But you have every right to be compensated for your property. Get a new place to live, or do whatever you want. It's your check, and all you have to do is take it. May I get it? Please. Hmm. <laughs> $30,000. That's a lot of money. Hmm. And it's good, right? Absolutely. Well, if you 
go if that falls in. It's not a problem. I'm going to kiss it. house is being raised with or without your permission when I come back I'm coming back with a sheriff bulldozers and a wrecking ball whether you're in the house or not my employers say there's going to be a casino on this property and it's my job to see that it happens now your neighbors have all sold out you're the last one left I'll be back here in 30 days but this time I'm bringing a wrecking ball Johnny. Johnny, my boy. You are going to go to hell. You're gonna have me thrown off this land? Oh. What kind of a man are you? You just can't do it to me. No way. The law says I can. like to try some hypnosis on you. I, I really do think we could make some progress. Donut, <clears throat> I don't mind breaking up the set. Uh, no thanks. I'm just honestly concerned about what I could say. John, I know it's not your choice to be here, I, that you're with me from now on, but I do need to tell you that I am sensing just a little, oh, how should I say, a dangerous amount of Anxiety just bubbling beneath the surface. Dr. Mitchell, can I ask you something? Of course. Well, you're keeping our meetings entirely confidential, correct? Absolutely. You know, I, uh, I take my patients' privacy very serious. Because you're aware you could lose your license if anything got out, right? John, I do not understand. Did I do something to cause you to doubt me? Well, the other night, Officer Suzanne made uh, reference to his sympathies for the loss of our, uh, well, Molly. I'm, I'm not following. Well, we didn't tell anybody here about that. But you have my word for it. I would never reveal anything, any such information to anyone, even if they were the law. It's against code. Mm -hmm. And, uh, hey, are you sure that you or Samantha 
can tell someone in passing, you know, world travels fast in small towns, you know? Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. I mean, Samantha wouldn't talk to anybody about that. She's still too ashamed. Oh, you mentioned a break-in. Well, yeah, but Officer Suzanne wouldn't know the contents of the journal entries. It's not like he made a house call. We went to him. Yeah, well, I, th- I think we have a lot of work to do. I don't think these meetings are working out. I think that after today, we need to terminate our contract. Now, I'm still going to pay you for the full, you know, battery of sessions, but I need to focus exclusively on Samantha but right now. John, you do realize you're very, very sick. You're handling now the loss of a child you, and your recent, <clears throat> shall we say, sexual incompetences, I, 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 you know, uh, they won't just vanish once we part ways. You, you, you really do need me. You need my help. And, and I have been chosen, huh, to give it to you. I'll be okay. Yeah, well, how's Samantha supposed to stand side by side with her husband? When, when he's too sick to give her the, the pleasure she deserves. She is trying to heal as well as you, John, with your, you know, think about it. Think about her for a moment, would you? With your being, well, incapable of satisfying her. <laughs> How do you suppose you will save your already crumbling marriage? Hmm? How dare you? Wow. I haven't broken any codes, John. But if you choose to terminate our time together, you, in fact, will be the one to do so. Think about it just for a moment. You know, without a way to satisfy your fragile wife as well as losing your job, you'll surely find yourself in a downward spiral alone. Broke. Uh, you know, uh, still sick in the head. Hmm? We understand each other, I presume. Huh? You're thinking too much into this. Things like this happen in the country. It's no one's fault. It's not a coincidence, John. We have no service up here. That phone line was our only hope. I saw you and your lovely wife at our last service, and I wanted to come by and personally welcome you to our church any time. I would have called, but your phone line appears to be dead. Uh, won't you please come in? So, uh, can I offer you a drink? Oh, that's very kind, but no thank you, John. Actually, I've been on the wagon for 15 years. It only encouraged the devil to come out and play. Well, you won't mind if I pour myself a double, will you? No, please. Where's your wife? She's feeling a little under the weather. She's upset we had a break in. Oh, that's awful. Yeah. Uh, have a seat. Well, I hope she's feeling better soon. Yeah. Reverend, have you ever seen any demonic imagery in town? Demonic? Not that I can recall. Why do you ask? Well, in the break-in, they painted a pentagram on the wall. Oh, that's terrible. Are you all right? Well, Samantha's uh, pretty shaken up, and, you know, frankly, I'm just pretty angry. Oh, I can imagine. Have you talked to the police? Yeah, to no avail. And Dr. Mitchell, have you... Dr. Mitchell? How did you know that I talked to Dr. Mitchell? You know how word travels in small towns. I hope I haven't offended... Maybe I should go to the basement and see what it was you were talking about? Okay, let's do it. supernatural. It 
it's just hillbillies with vengeance. I think I need to tell you that you're in a bit of trouble, it seems. How so? I'm concerned about Samantha. We all are. She has been through a lot. Perhaps she'd like to come to the church and speak with me alone from time to time. Who knows, maybe I could restore her faith, give her some hope. Well, that's very kind, Reverend, but I think we're all set on the therapy side. You'll have to forgive me, but uh, word does get around in a small town quickly, as I said. And Well, as I understand it, uh, you've recently been unable to provide Samantha with... Um, <clears throat> Sensual pleasure? Oh, that's certainly nobody's business but Samantha's and myself. Of course not, of course not, but that sort of relationship is very important for a couple. Without it, a marriage can crumble, and we all know divorce is a sin. So what do you propose, Reverend? How does the church feel about your sex education classes? You need to take a step back and think, John. We're here to help, not cause problems. Well, from the looks of this artwork, the problems have already started. You need to think of your wife in this time of uncertainty. This is ridiculous. I had heard that you all were a rough lot, but you're proving to be as evil as the devil that you're all apparently running from. I want you out of my personal affairs, you and everybody else. But you've already led me inside. <laughs> explains all the insanity. Did you happen to see anybody on the property the other night? I'd keep my blinds closed if I were you. Yeah, why's that? They like to peer in from time to time. Who? They don't like to be named, and I'm smart enough to respect their wishes. Once they get in, they'll never want to leave. What about the family that lived there before? Did you know them? There's never been any family that's lived there for as long as I can remember. He's a village idiot. All the small towns have him. He probably doesn't even know the world exists outside of this town. He probably didn't graduate first grade. John, what kind of questions is Dr. Mitchell asking you? Well, just, um, just about my past and stuff, I guess. I don't know. But you don't know for sure? What are you getting at? Nothing. I just think I should know the questions that are being asked. Don't worry about it. You're telling our most private issues to a stranger, and you don't even know what you're talking about. Back. I've never killed anybody. Uh, I've never even broke the law in any way. Uh, I'm not cheating. I didn't mean it like that. Never mind. Okay, just forget it. You know, Samantha, if I wanted the world to know our issues, I might scribble them in a journal and pass the pages out to the townsfolk. <sighs> oh, you bastard. Plot thickens. Look, I'm just so goddamn stressed out right now. John, don't you see what's happening? Do I have to map it out for you? What are you talking about? You're trying to do. God damn it. John, don't answer it. 
course I'm going to answer it. It's just your pal Yeti, drunk and delusional and raving about the blood moon, whatever that is. should have been from the beginning just a fine. I mean, why take me in? Drunk in public's a serious offense. I wasn't drunk, officer. I had a bottle. Yes, but I wasn't drunk. Well, rest assured, you won't be spending the night here anyhow. There's a couple of pretty rough fellows back in that drunk tank that sure would like to get their hands on you. I'm doing you a huge favor. Can I get a ride? Samantha's going to be worried that something happened to me. Something did happen to you, Mr. Harris. You got arrested. Well, can I use your phone? No use. Try to call lines down. That's right. Look, about that ride. Mr. Harris, we're not a taxi service. Besides, 
I'm sure she's fine. Oh, right, before you go, take this. Never played steal another man's alcohol. Probably gonna need it soon anyhow. What's that? Remember when I told you things may about may get a lot worse? Consider this the eye of the storm. You better be on your best behavior. The town people are getting pretty riled up. It's over. What? Oh, you no. win. Oh, John. where is she? John, the dead horse, John. We're whipping the dead horse. Your abandonment issues from childhood have caused this kind of inebriation, some kind of an early psychosis into a missing spouse. Oh, John, John. This is 
I'm, no. He's just having an emotional moment. Well, yes. Doctor. Yes. John, for my part, I think a turn to the Lord might be the right thing to do at this point. Fuck time. you. Oh. Damn. <clears throat> <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Harris. Now, don't you let them bother you at all. They just don't know how to be polite. Thank you. How you feeling? Are you okay, Mr. Harris? Yeah, I'm, I'm great. What do you ask? Oh, no reason. I just thought you looked a little bit tired, that's all. Well, I suppose uh, sleep really isn't on the uh, agenda at the moment. Now, uh, can I start you off with some coffee? Uh, yeah, thank you. took away. He has a family with five kids. That farm was their livelihood. Well, sometimes change is good for people. Perhaps. Leave him alone, Bill. Sometimes you can be so overbearing. Can I get you anything to eat, Mr. Harris? Oh, no, thank you. Just, uh, just coffee for now. And Maybe I can buy you a cup of coffee. Well, that's very kind of you. City folks are that kind. She's a nice lady. Yeah, she is. She's my wife. <laughs> I believe she wanted to be an actress. Yeah, she worked for me in my auto parts store, but. She prefers to be a waitress.
Was it you? What are you talking about? I'm trying to be civil here. But please don't lie to my face. Like I said before, we're just here to do our work. No harm done. So, why are you doing this? What are you talking about? Where is she? Where's who? How would I know? Living inside that little head of yours too long, you need to get outside to take a look at the big picture. Maybe she left you for another man. Women don't like living with guys who uh, make a living hurting other people. <laughs> hey, hey, folks! Listen, uh, uh, Mr. Harris over here. His wife left him for another man. Now, isn't that a shame? Stop that. You are bothering everyone. <laughs> I'm not trying to push out, Mr. Harris, but it's the end of my shift and I'll be going. This is for you. I'll be going out with Doris tonight and we'll be home at eight. Make sure it's not any later.
Maybe this whole place is shot through with abandoned coal mines. Well, it's like a goddamn rabbit warren down there. But whatever's down there, whatever that darkness is, it always finds a way to the surface. It seeps up from the ground and it finds its way inside you. It's subtle. Of course, if it pounds, you'd know to run away. Fight or flight. But now, it's slow and steady and sure. Of course, it's already got you. Uh, I've been noticed you drink a little more, smoke a little more. You probably don't even eat anymore. It's nothing new, but I'm sure it's not the guy you were two weeks ago. I'd say you are on the hook. Which is why I leave this town. Uh, you can buy me a drink. Conversation's not free. But the advice is... You got a six-letter word for chopper all meat? And before you say it, it's not tartar. she would like. Whiskey and Coke. I get extra money. Yeah. So, uh, how are you this evening? My baby's gone. She was kidnapped a week ago and, and nobody can tell me where she is and what's going on. They just keep telling me I'm supposed to keep I believe that you can't give up. You have to have hope. Why are you still here? I spent the last two minutes telling this guy he needs to go. I wish I could have caught myself wrapped up with someone like you. You're not from around here, are you? No, no, New York City. You don't say. You have to have hope. I think there's something important that I can show you. <laughs> Ah, you gotta get it. I think this will help. Alright, let's go.
You must be very proud, very lucrative. <laughs> last Sunday service. I hope nothing's wrong. I know it's flu season. We've all been trying to avoid it. But all we can do is trust that the Lord will keep us safe. No matter the conditions, we must trust in the Lord, our brother, our creator, our savior for all eternity. Or something like that. <laughs> I've never been very good at that. John, I just want to say this whole project was an enormous success, both for the town and for our company. At first, I wasn't sure you were to handle such a project. It's just a few sleepless nights is all. We'd like to offer you a very lucrative position. One that will give you all the flexibility and keep you on top of all the projects. Well, Martin, I appreciate that, but I, I mean, Samantha and I are both talking seriously about stepping things down a little bit. Maybe get out of the city, maybe live closer to her parents. I mean, raising a child in New York City is very difficult. This wasn't the reaction I was expecting, but I understand entirely. You're a good man, very honorable. By the way, I just got off the phone with Jerry Sylvia. He's with the state police up there in Frostburg. He's considering opening an investigation. Something about his brother, he was the local sheriff's, and some other townsfolk. They went missing. You wouldn't happen to know anything about this, do you? Can't say that I do. Remember earlier when I said that if you ever needed a favor, you'd be granted but one? But I don't, I don't see what... A cover-up is easy in a small town, John. But without one, things can get a little bit messy. And this whole ordeal has gone way out of proportion. I always knew you had the devil inside, you crazy bastard. Forget it. Say hi to Samantha for me. Before you guys go on your travels, come see me. Martin? 
I want to thank you for this opportunity. I won't let you down, sir. You deserve it, John. Hey, if you have a moment, I want to introduce you to somebody. This is Mr. Erickson. He's our corporate lawyer. He's going to work underneath you. You two are going to work well together. He's an expert in his field. You're in charge now, buddy. We figured you could use the extra hand while I'm gone. I have to go away for a while. I think you two are going to work well together. I look forward to working with you, Mr. Erickson. Say, why don't we go out and have a drink to celebrate our success?